It's always been that way. It probably always will be that way. Let me give you the phone numbers. In Tampa, 224-0057. No. Hi, Brandon. Thanks for holding here on the RWPLP. Hi, Bob. Hi. Uh, one of those salesmen that rarely gets to listen to you in one entire hour, except that uh, today I caught you uh, coming back from Fort Myers just south of Sarasota. Or, uh, yeah, just south of Sarasota. I couldn't even pick you up until that time. Then one gentleman, you explained to him that your power was down for a while. So I was able to listen to the whole show coming back to Brandon. And I uh, just want to relate an experience that happened to me. I'm sure. Back to about 25 years ago now. Uh, I was a freshman in high school. Uh, we had a new teacher come in, and he taught Latin, and nobody liked him. And he really didn't deserve the abuse that he got, except that he was the classical nerd-type teacher. And, of course, we were all, you know, the great students of the world, and we knew what was, you know, what we were doing. Mm-hmm. And we tended to harass this, dude, this uh, teacher throughout the, the four years that I was in high school. And it really culminated into a incident in, the, in my final year when I was a senior in high school. We had this same Latin instructor that we had as freshmen. We had him for a... a um, a study hall class relatively early in the morning and uh, we still abused the teacher because we thought it was cute at that time um, things like we would write his name on a blackboard with some things underneath it nothing uh, nothing dirty just kind of uh, derogatory towards him uh, the guys would bring a little doll in and they would hang him in effigy as a, you know, when the uh, teacher walked in they'd uh, take his, his desk set up on a little bitty platform they would push the desk out to the point where it was almost off the platform, so when he sat down, his desk would fall on the floor, was creating quite a ruckus. But one day, he had just about had it with us, and... Um, I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why, yeah. Of course, they say, we, you know, we didn't know the, the difference at the time. And he, <clears throat> like, well, you know, one of the students had uh, dropped his pencil on the floor on purpose again, got up and walked around his desk and picked it up, and then he dropped it again and walked around. Well, teacher had uh, just had it with all of us, walked up off his desk and walked over and slapped this guy up on the back of the head about as hard as he could and sent the student to the principal's office. Well, I sat back about, oh, I don't know, maybe 12, 15 rows and stared at that uh, teacher for the longest period of time until he looked at me and said, uh, you know, what's the matter with you? And I told him, I said, you know, I said, I just don't agree with you hitting somebody in the head like you did. And he said, well, he deserved it. You know, and he, we went back and forth with some comments back and forth. And my contention was I just thought that, uh, you know, hitting him in the head was not the right thing to do. Slap him anywhere, slap him in the shoulder, slap him in the back, kick him in the knee, whatever you want to do. Don't slap the poor kid in the head. And we went on for about five or six minutes like that. When out of the corner of my eye, I was sitting by the, the door which came into the side of the room. I could see the principal walking into the room. And I expected almost one in the back of my head about that time, but I didn't get it. The principal just stood in the back and listened to us for about another two or three minutes exchanging the conversation back and forth. I told him, you know, what I disagreed with, and he told me what happened and why he did that particular thing. And finally the principal just said, okay, guys, let's stop it right here. There's probably maybe 15 to 16 students in the study all the time. And uh, he gave the, the uh, teacher's point of view first. And he said, no, you guys, I, I know what's going on here. You guys have harassed this principal or this, this teacher for the last four years, and... I think he's had about enough of it. And he looked at me and he said, I take your uh, ideas in mind also. He said, no, I don't agree with the, the teacher hitting the student in the head. But what had happened was he had just had enough of your harassment and he blew it. And now if we can all just stop and look at the whole situation. We did this you know, in front of all the students, the teacher, myself, and everybody else. He even brought the other you know, student back who had gotten hit. Mm-hmm. And the principal laid it all on the line right there and told us what he thought of us for the harassment. He told the teacher what he thought of, you know, for the hitting incident. And we all got together and stopped it right then and there after four years of going through this, you know, baloney. And Sounds like they had there. a good principal. He was very nice. Yeah. Uh, excellent. He had, like I said, he handled the situation in front of everybody. He took my point of view, the teacher's point of view, and cooled the whole thing right there. Had he done it sooner, I guess, you know, the whole thing culminated because nobody really did anything drastic through this four years. It was, you know, just a series of pranks that we would pull on the, on the poor teacher and whatnot. But this culmination of, you know, getting slapped in the back of the head and whatnot, they just they brought it to the end and the, and the principal uh, solved the whole problem right there. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know, that's the end of it. So, anyway, appreciate your show. gifted Senator. students, but I can't see having special classes or special rows or special rooms for gifted students. We didn't have, it was because 
That was a rural township. It was several towns bound together in an educational district. Well, I think you just do tremendous damage to a child, and a child knows. A special class to deal with apparent problem people, and they filled out a few odd spots with people that weren't being too terribly serious about advancing study, and on that particular course I wasn't. I was just filling out the point requirements to graduate. I had other things in mind. And anyway, uh, it was very strange that the teacher never dared let, let his eyes off the class, use an overhead projector to put everything on the blackboard uh, on a white screen, because if his eyes left the class for as much as one second, uh, you'd hear violence. And frequently he'd be looking, he would look down at what he was drawing, pure instinct, and he'd look back up, and some, something would have happened. Maybe the black rudder, rubber hose would have whapped somebody, or I don't know what. But uh, it was pretty damn strange. As far as the, ki the kids that are not motivated, the kids that don't want to learn, the kids that don't care, why not just give them a certificate that says, good for one high school education, and put them out the front door? Why not figure out a way to motivate them? I don't know how. Life often motivates people to do things that they themselves weren't motivated. Let well, them, you know, I agree with you. I don't know how to do it either, but there's got to be some way. Let them get five years of maturity. Let them get five years of, the, of education at Hard Knocks University, best damn school in the world. Tuition's a little tough. But let them go out and get a couple of years, and then let them come back of weirdness, and let them come back if they're motivated. And if they're not motivated... Ever, it's that much less tax burden. It's callous. Oh, you're quite wrong. It's that much more tax burden. Why? If Why? If motivated, they're, if they're you have going people, to take up room in the educational system. If you have people who have no skills, who can't earn a living or enough of a living, we've got to take care of these people. We can't let them rot in the gutter. Sir, they're it's going a hell of a lot che cheaper to motivate them and teach them when they're young than it is to support them for the rest of their lives. I appreciate what you're telling me. I think you're missing one point. You're going to have to take care of them anyway because they're going to sit in the high school, take up room, not take benefit from it. They're going to go out and carry on the same way anyhow. You'll have the same problems as not educating them. But what you're advocating is a permanent underclass. We can't have that. There's no way to run a country. Is it? What do you suggest as an alternative? I'm simply recognizing, the, uh, talking about recognizing that there are people that do not appreciate or seek an education. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm being naive. Maybe I'm being simplistic. Maybe but if I'm you can figure simple. out, if you can figure out a way how to put men on the moon, if you can dream about building space shields in the sky, and there are people that say it can be done, then it seems to me there's got to be some damn way to figure out how to motivate children to learn and to teach them. Sir, in the 1600s, the great field of the great frontier of man's knowledge was astronomy. In the 1700s, we were learning about chemistry and electricity. In the 1800s, we were learning about machinery and, and how to build telegraphs and guns like we never did before. In the 1900s, we started working on things like political reform and so society and psychology. The frontier of knowledge is the human mind. We can put men on the moon because that's a that is a field of knowledge we are now competent in. We're still on the great. It's frontier. a field of knowledge that we made ourselves competent in. It became a national goal to do that. We, we put all of our resources and energies into doing that. I agree. We're not there yet in the arena of human thought. We are not going to be there for a number of years. I think we're headed in the other direction. I, I would go along with you about the, you know, the, the century of astronomy and the century of electricity. And we came pretty damned close in the late, uh, 18, or the late 19th and the early 20th century into figuring out how the hell to educate everybody. But then we seem to have lost it, and we're slipping backwards now. And it should be our national goal, I think. It's a problem. It really I is. I don't know. The only uh, one motivation to cause people to uh, stay more or less in line is to simply reassure them that a weird behavior simply won't be tolerated. No, oh, I agree with you on that. Unfortunately, my friend, I'm way over my break because I'm enjoying this conversation, but i got to run. 
I don't have an answer. Nor do I, but there's got to be one. I hope so. Thank you. Bye-bye. 5.39 the time. Randy Wilburn standing by with Money and Markets. Sorry for the delay. Good afternoon, Randy. Good afternoon, Bob. Well, we had a a wave of late buy. 5.45 the time. South Pasadena High, you're on the air at WPLP. Ah, Bob. Yes, sir. I've just heard you speak about the parochial schools. Mm -hmm. I went uh, before your time, and the hardest thing in my life that I've never learned how to spell right, you know, spelling good. (laughs) They never taught me. And I knew the Polish language fluently. I never used it. I knew the Polish uh, alphabets. I never used it. But any time I went for uh, applications and all of that, I was stumped. And when I went to, uh, you know, I'm not going to say thank God for the war, but they they gave me an alphabet that can't classify for the things. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, you've got to learn how to read, you've got to learn how to write, and you've got to learn how to talk. And if you can do those three things, then you can do anything else you want. But if you can't do those three things, you're trapped. Right. I had to take music lessons. I couldn't read the notes, so they made me take music lessons. But I was very good in uh, math, trig, and uh, mechanical drawing, and Mm -hmm. uh, machine shop, you know, in an industrial course. Mm -hmm. In my days, we had industrial courses. I don't know, they changed them around, but uh, some way or another, I was fortunate that I got into in the marine engineering. But I tell you, I sweat. Every time I took a test, I had to write little words down, spelling certain machinery and all of that. I sweat right now if I have to write something if I don't have my personal computer available to me, because I know I can't spell, and it embarrasses the hell out of me. It embarrasses me. I would like to... Co- uh, write letters to some of my friends, you know. I moved down to Florida, but I feel always uh, sort of embarrassed if I misspell words. You know, after all, mm-hmm. you're 60 years old. When you misspell words to someone else who's educated, they look at you, you must you must think they, that they think you're an idiot. Wish they had taught me how to spell instead of teaching me that mayonnaise was fattening. Right. <laughs> okay, I thank you. I figured that one out on my own. All right, thank you. It's a pleasure speaking to you. Take care. Bye. Bradenton High, you're on the air at WPLP. Hi, I'm in ninth grade, and it makes me mad. I went um, all the way through eighth grade, and I graduated eighth grade and passed. And I couldn't do a long division at all, and I could, and I didn't know my times tables by heart. And now they decide to toughen up. When I'm in high school, they require me to know all this stuff when they never even taught it to me. And I'm fail. I failed math, and I have to go to summer school, so I didn't understand what they. You were weren't taught me. long division and multiple multiple. I was taught it, but I I. I fell behind in about second grade, and they had never bothered catching me up. They just passed me and everything, and mm. it didn't seem to bother. You know, it didn't bother me at the time. I didn't think it was that important, but now, you know. Oh, mathematics are incredibly important. That is I know. one of the few strengths in my life is simple arithmetic. I'm an absolute whiz at it, and I can do it all in my head. Well, I'm, um, I didn't, you know, when I was in third and fourth grade, just didn't seem important, just as long as I knew how to read and write. It's like in eighth grade. Seventh grade, I took the Iowa test of basic skills, and I rated in the top three percent of the country in the vocabulary section and all that. Mm-hmm. And in math, I mean, I did terrible. And I just don't understand why they didn't help me. They knew I was, they knew I didn't know how to do multiplication, yet they never tried to catch me up. You know exactly. You bring up a valid point with all of the testing that we do in our schools today, or at least I'm led to believe that we do a lot of testing in our schools today. You know, they should know where your weaknesses are. And where your strengths are. And, you know, hey, let's face it, if you're terribly, I'm terribly good in arithmetic. I'm very bad in spelling. What they should have done with me is take me the hell out of their arithmetic class that I didn't need and put me in a spelling class that I desperately needed. Uh Uh-huh. And it seems to me that you have the same problem. Yeah, well, this was in Chicago. When I came here, I failed math all the time. They started grading everything. In Chicago, they just passed me. Here, they failed me, but it didn't matter. I would just go on to the next grade anyway. But it was only one class I was failing. Brilliant. And now my mom has to pay for a tutor for me because of what they didn't. Hey, you're lucky to have a mom that, A, first of all, will part with the bucks, and B, has them. Mm-hmm. I Real know. lucky. I could. I, I might have ended up not even going to high school or something like that. How you doing now? Is the tutor helping? Well, I, I start this summer while I'm taking summer school. I see. I gave up on math this year because I really couldn't. I learned how to do division this year. Finally, I have a teacher who decided to help me. Mm-hmm. You know. Do they let you use calculators, by the way? No. Hmm. That's in um, um, algebra. 
They oh. do let you use them in there. Because mm-hmm. that's where that's where I'm weak uh, in in the higher mathematics and algebra and trigonometry and calculus. If they had let me use a calculator, I've since taught myself how to do it based upon the calculator. Calculator allowed me to accept the things that I couldn't accept in mathematics. You know, such as the, I always had trouble with like negative numbers. Didn't make any sense to me. But if the calculator says that, you know, minus nine times minus five is forty-five, that I can accept. You tell me, and I say you're crazy. Uh huh. Well, oh, they well. allow. In ge- I'm in general math one. And, and it, you know, I'm in general math one, yet I'm in advanced English and social studies. And I'm failing that, yet I'm getting A's and B's in my other classes. It's just that one week area. What other kind of classes do you have? I, mean, I have no children, and I'm so far removed from school, it's, it's pathetic. What other kinds of things uh, do you have on a regular basis in school? Well, Subject they, matter. Uh, they require four, four years of English, three years of math, um, three years of science. You have to take a performing arts credit for at least a semester in music or art or something. Mm-hmm. You have to take uh, altogether two years of um, social studies, American government, world mm-hmm. history, and you have to take some kind of computer credit or typing or business, mm-hmm. those kind of things. Mm-hmm. I, I've had... Um, Do you have anything that you consider to be absolutely frivolous in school that you pretty much have to take? Pardon me? Do you have anything that you consider to be frivolous... Uh, in school that you have to take? No. I mean, everything I take, I, I feel necessary. Mm-hmm. I, I was given the choice, and next year, I, this summer, I have to make up a semester of math, and next year, I can't take driver's education because I have to make up the other semester. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay, thank you, my young friend. Okay, bye. Appreciate the call. Tampa, 224-0057. Pinellas. 393-0057, Sarasota, Bradenton, 746-0057. It's awfully frustrating. I don't have the answers. I try not to talk about things that I don't have at least a partial solution to. And I have no idea what the solution is, but I do know, I am confident, and will not be convinced otherwise, that we have a major, major problem in education in this country today. And that we don't really, from what I can see, appear to be doing an awful lot about it. And I just fail to understand how, you know, and this is no secret. I'm not telling you something that you don't know, that you haven't read or heard about before. And I just fail to understand why it is not some type of incredible national priority in which we're putting all of our efforts and, oh, whatever. Frustrating as hell, isn't it? Must be even more frustrating if you have kids. Dan Rather standing by with his daily commentary. CBS News at the top of the hour. One more open hour following that. And it has been open today. We're all over the place. Don't go far, please. You're listening to The Bob Lasseter Show on WPLD. 